Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to iBox. Welcome to our Blue Room here in the uh, very historic Bill Struth main stand of iBox Stadium. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to present to you and welcome Philip Clement, the 19th permanent uh, manager of Rangers Football Club. And uh, we'd be delighted to take uh, your questions. I think we'll start with Mark from, from Sky. Yeah, Philip, congratulations. Uh, first and foremost, how have you found the first couple of days and how does it feel you're sat there in that seat in this famous stadium and the job starts for real in many ways? Yeah, first, uh, nice to meet you all for the first time. No, I'm, uh, I'm really delighted to be here. It's been uh, hectic days, but it's normal. Uh, if you step in this part of the season, it's always different than when you do it uh, at the end of the season and you have uh, six, seven weeks of preparation. But it's not the first time like that. So I knew what uh, would happen. Um, and I'm really delighted to be here. You guys see it also in an iconic stadium with uh, a club with a lot of fans. And that was one, one of the things I was looking for. Yeah, a lot of fans, that brings with it expectation, brings with it pressure. What are the short-term and long-term objectives, goals, targets? Uh, my short-term and long-term objectives are always to win. I'm about that. Uh, that's my life. It's always been my life. So that's what I want. But I know also there's a process to come to that point. Um, and we need to work on that. There are a lot of things we can make better. And it's going to be a process week by week to make things better. And to be focused on ourselves, I think it's a, it's a really important point. When I saw all the games of the team this season, I saw moments of uh, frustration that players really wanted, but they started to do the wrong things because their, their expectations were that high, and maybe from the fans also. Uh, we need now to, to create a really stable story together that everything is really clear for them and that we can play really good football with good results. James, can I bring you in at that point? Because there's also an expectation that comes from above. How prepared are the board to be patient, to give Philippe and his team time to perhaps have bad days to deliver long-term success? Yeah, no, I, think, I think we recognise that continuity and stability is going to be absolutely key to this football club. This is the 19th manager we've had in 151 years, and we went through a process uh, that was multi-layered and undertook a lot of due diligence and took our time with the board to get this appointment right. We had a very clear vision in terms of the characteristics that we wanted the next main Rangers manager to have, and the board were unanimous that, that, that Philippe was the outstanding candidate in that process. So absolutely, this is a, uh, a long-term appointment, but you know, Rangers is about winning, and you know, there's a lot of football to be played this season. I know that Philip and the squad will be giving it everything that they've got for this to be a successful season. But absolutely, we are looking forward to working with, with Philip in the short, medium and long term. A very thorough process to find the new manager. When looking at where you're at and what's perhaps not worked, what needs to change, have you also decided what to do in terms of above him, a sport and direct? Because perhaps one of the issues before was that the previous manager had to do too much regarding recruitment, etc. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's a conversation mm -hmm. Philippe and I have had. It's one that Philippe's had with, with the board. And um, I'll come back to, to, to the question directly. But to, to provide some context on that, both the chairman and I and all of the board, we, we recognise that the, the leadership, the governance of the football department is absolutely fundamental to our short, medium and long term success. So in, in that regard, we have a football board uh, with a number of leaders across the football department. We have our chief scout, John Park, that sits on that. He heads our, up our scouting division. We have Craig Robertson, our director of football operations, the chairman and myself, uh, the manager, Dr. Dr. Mark Waller, our director of medical and performance, and our academy director. So we feel we've got a really strong group of leaders that will implement the football strategy and take key decisions, whether that's player contracts, whether it's um, uh, player acquisitions. Um, but all of that said, yes, we, we do believe that a director of football, uh, a technical director, is something that would add additional value. And it's, uh, it is a live conversation that we're, that we're having at the moment to complement and to complete that leadership structure within the football side. Philippe, Martin Down, BBC, nice to meet you. Given what James was talking about there in terms of continuity and long-term and stability that's required in football, I wonder what assurance you sought coming into Rangers given the previous two managers had just around about a year to implement what they look to do. 
because I believe in the potential that this club has. Uh, I believe also the, the people I talked with last couple of weeks. Um, it was a really genuine talk, really clear, also talking about the difficult points in the club. The, it was not only a, a fantastic story about how big the club is and only the positive point, but also the things they struggled with, the things they think that needed to be changed, why to speak with me about that because of my profile. Um, I spoke with them about the things I thought by seeing the games that could have been better. We were aligned about that. We spoke about sportive director, what the role is, how it needs to be aligned also with the manager. So we talked about a lot of things and that gave me the feeling to that this is the right club to be now and that we know we have a lot of work to do, but we are very motivated to, to change several things as fast as possible. Mark asked about the short term versus the long term. At Rangers, the short term often is, is crucial. How important do you see the next few weeks in terms of how fans perceive you as a manager? Um, I just work day and night really hard with the players to get the best out of them. Then you need to get results on the pitch. And sometimes it's uh, you have lucky days, sometimes you have unlucky days. Um, I'm somebody who looks past that. I know with the story we have, the way of working, that it needs also a bit of time to implement everything. And that's normal also because you speak about players moving together, you speak about offensive football, but you need to automatize that. You need uh, a lot of trainings around that before it becomes natural for the players. And sometimes it goes fast and sometimes it takes a little bit more time in all the teams that I've been. But at the end, everywhere, there were the results, there were the goals, there were the, the good games. So I know it will come with the potential for me that is here in the club, with the potential that is here in the dressing room and with the ambition the club has also for the future um, to make the right decisions if some positions need to be strengthened. How do you see the challenge of overcoming Celtic in the league this season given you come in seven points behind at the moment. It's not an advantage, of course, to be seven points behind. That's clear. No, I think one thing, and that's maybe the major thing for the next weeks, maybe months, we will see, that we need to be focused on ourselves. For me, um, a season is like a marathon, and it's of no use to look at this guy that is running in front of you all the time and then try to chase it with one big sprint and don't have the legs anymore to do the marathon and to kill yourselves. No, you need to focus on yourself, on your pace, to, uh, that you hire that pace, that it's, it's faster than before, that it's better than before and that you can do all this marathon. It's not about the next two, three games. It's about a lot of games this season in a lot of competitions. So we need to look at all those things. We need to focus on ourselves, not on other teams and to make our story better and better and better and better during all season. Just and then you get results at the end. Sorry, Always. Uh, James, finally from me, can I ask in terms of the boards and the recruitment, what criteria changed and maybe what lessons were, were learned or, or even discussed? In the manager recruitment? Yes. Yeah, well, I think when we, see, we had the conversation after the Aberdeen game, and the board took a difficult decision to part company with, with Michael and, and his staff. Um, but we felt it was the right decision in the best interest of the club. And we then discussed what the criteria would be for the next Rangers manager. And we placed a strong emphasis on leadership, character, man management. And we aligned that also with the football criteria you would expect, the football methodology, the football identity. But also we wanted a manager that had a strong track record as a winner and experience in, in the game that could handle uh, everything that comes with being the manager of this, of this football club. So that was the criteria that we entered into the process over the two weeks, the first round of the interviews, the second round, the, the final stages. And as we progressed the process, as we, we had more detailed conversations, we spent a lot of hours together in, in London and then, and then Brussels. And Philippe got a chance as well to talk to our investors in the US and, and in Asia. 
you know, it became more and more apparent that, that for us uh, and for the board that, that Philippe uh, was, the, was the standout candidate in terms of the criteria that we felt was, was really important. Philip, hi. You said you need to make a lot of things better, uh, specifically, and when you're prioritising, what are those things that need to change? I know all my colleagues and my friends in the other teams are watching this, so <laughs> I'm not going to give them more material about that. Uh, I think you, you guys uh, have been speaking about that last couple of weeks, last couple of months, so you know a lot of things. I know more things because I start to get to know the players also better. And it's, it's my job together with all staff and together with the players to make things better. Uh, but there's, there are quite some things to do. Otherwise, we, we would not be in this situation and I would not be sitting in this chair. Clear. What are your initial impressions of the squad? Uh, for the moment, I didn't see the squad in total because we had uh, still a lot of guys who are away for international games. So we saw part of the squad. We trained also the last two days with uh, several young players from academy. It's also an important part of my job that I've always been doing uh, in, in all the teams to implement young players to develop them and to give them chances and to let them grow step by step. So we started with that and to implement the first uh, parts of the football that we want to play. But for sure, yeah, we don't have all the players yet uh, back, so you cannot do it with all squad. So the team that will start on Saturday was not on the pitch yet today. You said you spoke to Thomas before. What did he tell you in terms of what you can expect and what the expectations are here? Yeah, Thomas was very positive about the club. He had a great time here. Uh, he knows me also really well. We played together in a, a national team before. I was his coach in Genk in his, uh, his last year there. So he, he, he told me that this is really a club that suits me because he knows I'm a winner and I want to go through the wall to win games. And this is the mentality that this club needs and wants and what the fans want. Um, that it's fantastic to be in this stadium when everybody is behind you. And he told me also that next couple of weeks for sure he's going to come uh, to watch some games. James, can you just set out why Philip was an outstanding candidate in the recruitment process? Yeah, well, I think... I mean, it goes back to the criteria that, that we set out. And, you know, obviously we, with the panel, we asked different questions and we had a very open two-way conversation with Philippe and all the candidates to, to understand if they would be suitable to, to, to that criteria. And we, we found very quickly, you know, from the data that we'd already accumulated, we, we understood what Philippe's track record was as, as a manager, as, as a winner winning the league title with Genk, with Club Bruges, and then again with, with Club Bruges. And, the initial impact he had at Monaco, his experience at Champions League, group stages, Europa League knockout stages, that, that pedigree was, 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 was clear. And it became even more apparent in terms of the, the personal characteristics, if you like, and the synergies and the chemistry that, that we felt that for us and for all of the board, you know, that, that, that Philippe was the standout candidate in, uh, in, in that process over, over the two weeks of the, of the conversations that we had. Can you tell us just how heavily involved Graham Snus was in the whole process? Graham was a great help to the process. Um, he added uh, a lot of value, and I thank him again for giving up his time to, to participate in the, in the process. He joined us in London when we met Philippe for the first time, and because some of the criteria that we set out were so uh, aligned with, I suppose, Graham's own characteristics when we talk about leadership, understanding the club, uh, dealing with the pressures, um, Graham was able to ask those questions from a real place of experience and you know he, he and Philippe had some some really good conversations yeah, in yeah. terms of in terms of that so yeah he, he added a lot of value and, and the board really thank him for participating and contributing to the process. If Philippe wants to make changes to the squad come January what scope will there be to make changes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, fir the first step really is Philippe and his staff to make an assessment on the squad to identify initially how do we increase performance how do we improve results and I'm sure Philippe will also give an assessment to the board, to the football board, where he sees the strengths and the weaknesses. And I believe the board and the investors will be receptive to, to Philippe's feedback in terms of any improvements, any acquisitions that the squad requires. Clearly, there's been investment in the squad in the summer. 
but the the standard and the bar at Rangers is very high. We want to win. We want to win silverware, and Philippe is here for that. That's why he's cho chosen Rangers above possibly some other options. So you know, Philippe, Philippe's voice will be really strong in that, and I believe the board will be receptive to the to the input that, that, that Philippe has. Just finally, for me, you touched upon the sporting director, technical director. Can you give a time scale as to when you'd be aiming to make that appointment? Certainly in the next few weeks, if not months, uh, we're having live conversations at the moment. Um, there are variables in that, depending on the, uh, the individuals that the board believe and, and the football board and Philippe Phil has the best fit. Um, but I believe it will be, will be imminent. Just want to, to James, you're talking about the, the long term and that you see Philippe being here long term. Yep. He's going to be the fourth manager in two years. How important is it that, that this does work long term? Really important. It goes back to my point around stability and continuity. We, this, this, this club doesn't have a track record of changing managers frequently in its 151 years of history. We've had 19 permanent managers. So the success that we've had as a football club has been built on that stability. And that's absolutely why Philippe, Philippe is here and why he's chosen Rangers and, and the common ground that we felt we found that we've had in, in the conversations. We believe that there's a lot to play for this season. We're in all four competitions. There's 30 games to play in, in the league, the semi-finals of the League Cup, the Scottish Cup's another competition we've had great heritage with. We've won it 34 times in European football. So we believe there will be short, medium and long-term um, objectives and we hope very much success with, with Philippe as our manager. Philippe, we're talking there about the club still being in all four competitions. What are the aims for you this season in terms of silverware? What have you been told? Must you win something this season? Must it be a specific competition or, or, or is it more long term? I told you already I want to win everything. That's, that's the mentality I have when I step into a building. Uh, I want to give this, this uh, mentality also towards the dressing room and g create more and more winners in this dressing room. So we're going to work really hard to, to get as fast as possible silverware and to, to make this story step by step bigger and bigger. How fast it comes, you never know. I don't have this crystal ball. I don't have, I'm not a magician also that uh, suddenly can totally change players. But I know if we can work long time with, a long time with players that we can make them better. And it's, we talked about that a lot. How to do it? Uh, it was really very interesting talks because it was really to the point with Graham, with with the people in the board. Also, not only we're gonna do it, but how. We talked uh, really a lot about that, about the holistic way, about creating better athletes, better football players, stronger mentalities in that way. But. It's, it's time. It's a, it's a very important thing. And it can go also really fast, I think, with this squad when they get more confidence and the fans go behind them. It's a major point in this club. If you have these 50,000 people behind you, this gives so much energy. You become so much stronger in every sense as a football player. So it's very important to create this synergy also, again, between fans and the players. It's going to be one of the major points for the next couple of weeks. And it's about me explaining this to the players and doing the right things on the pitch. And I hope that the fans understand that and they, they really know how much power they have also when they go behind players in a positive way. Just finally for me, you say it will take a while to get your philosophy across to, to win trophies. You don't know how long, but what will Rangers fans see? What should they expect from you in terms of football on the pitch? What will they see from their team? I like dominant football. I want to play dominant football. I did it also with the first team that I was coach or manager. Uh, Waslan Beveren who was a team who played against relegation in the Belgian league. We played also dominant football with them. In the beginning, it was pushing the players because in the beginning, nobody of the squad believed in that, that it would, it would be possible to do. But I saw that they had the qualities to do it. Um, to play attacking football with a lot of changing of positions, people creating space for, uh, for other players, but out of a good structure that you, you don't get too many transitions and, uh, and that you get stupid goals because you're, you're not 
thinking about your structure. So out of a structure, attacking football. Philippe, are you able to confirm who will make up your backroom team here? And if so, when you can expect all of those people to be in place? No, for the moment not. Um, so we took the decision together first to see also with the people who are here, uh, what are the qualities, how do they, how do they adapt to the story, uh, how do they work with the players, and in a few weeks we will make an evaluation and, and then see what's, what's necessary or not. So it's the same with, as with the players. I believe also really hard in, in looking of potential of, of people. Um, so we will see. I think I saw already that uh, quite some people with potential are already in the club. So we will see what happens. Is there scope for Stephen Davis to still remain a part of the, the backroom team here as well? Yeah, it's for everybody uh, a possibility. And uh, I had already good things uh, with Stephen last couple of days. For him, it's a totally new job. It's really a start uh, after being a player. So it's a totally different job. He knows that also now. Uh, we've been laughing about that. That's, it's a different w way of life than being a player. But it's somebody who was uh, always a leader by example. And he takes his first steps into this, uh, yeah, coaching life. Uh, I've been also in that situation many years ago and it's important to give people like that with uh, the knowledge of the game, um, with uh, the connection with the club, to give them chances and we will see next couple of weeks or months what is the best role to start this new adventure for him. James Tavenier has been the club captain here for the previous three managers. Is he expected to remain club captain under yourself as well? I don't see a reason for the moment to change those things. I think uh, I need to focus on, on many others for the moment and, uh, and step by step looking what is the best story for the club, but I don't see a, a reason for the moment to change that now. It's been a tough start to life at Rangers for Cyril Dessers, but that's a player I'm sure you'll know from your time in Belgium. What qualities have you seen in him? Are you confident that he can be the man that, that, that Rangers expected him to be in the summer? I've seen uh, Cyril doing a better job in Holland than he did in Belgium also. Uh, I've seen him play much better in Feyenoord than he did until now here. So he's somebody to work with, but there's no difference. Be clearly about that uh, because he's a Belgian guy that he gets more attention or I put more effort in, in him or my staff because it's not only me. It's me with uh, the staff together to put effort in the players. All the players are at the same level in that way. If you're Belgian or Scottish or, or, or British or, or whatever, uh, or you're 32 or 18, we will put effort in everybody. That's, uh, that's really important. And then we will see who are the guys who are in the best shape at that moment. We have a lot of games, so it's impossible to play with the same 11 players all the time. So we need a, a big squad where, where everybody is really ready to, to perform. Just a final one for me for yourself, James. Can you just tell us how difficult it was to, to part ways with Michael, given the, you know, the backing he received from the board in the summer? It's a difficult decision. I think when, whenever a, a club parts ways with, with, with a manager, um, the reality is there's a, there's a standard and expectation at Rangers, which is about winning, and the results fell short of that expectation. So... The board felt after the Aberdeen performance, the Aberdeen result, that that was the right decision for the football club. Uh, we would like to thank Michael and his staff, Neil, Harry, Damien and, and, and Jack, for all they did for the club. They, they were all in here at Rangers. They gave it everything that they had. They're, they're, they're brilliant people and we wish them well for whatever they go on to do, to do next in their, in their, in their careers. But the, the club felt that that was the right decision. So, question as well, James. There's a lot of games to be played before the next international break alone. How important was it in this week of, of interviewing candidates that you got someone with Philippe's calibre who has built things long term but has also been able to stabilise things and has experience of going into a club mid season? Yeah, I think the international break uh, was fortunate in terms of the window that gave us. And obviously, Stephen and Alec, uh, you know, they, they, they led the team through those two fixtures that took us into the international break. We felt that we had to get the decision right, so we would take as long as it took to, to come to that decision. But I think we always had in our minds, you know, yesterday was that first full week of training. 
so that the, the, the new manager, Philippe, could be here before we move into, as you said, Josh, that rhythm of games. It's, it's two games a week and it's, it's relentless here. So I feel as though we got the balance right in terms of the diligence, taking our time, having really detailed conversations with, with a number of high-caliber candidates. Um, but we're delighted that Philippe's here and, and, and started work this week uh, ahead of Saturday's game. In terms of director of football, James, sorry, what, will the manager have a, have a say in that appointment? Or will he have a role to play in that process? And can you outline some of the criteria that you're looking for in terms of who you're looking to bring in? Yeah, so that will be a, a club board appointment, but Philippe will absolutely be part of that process and, and we'll meet whoever we bring in before we take that decision. Um, and that person, when they come in, will add additional value, expertise and leadership to the recruitment function. Uh, we've currently got John Park as the chief scout at the top of that division. We've made some changes to the scouting function recently. We've modernized that in terms of some of the processes, additional emphasis on data and video analysis, and we've been, I think, more strategic and focused on, on how we've set that up. Philippe will have some strong views on that as well. Um, but it's a, it's a decision that the, the board will take in terms of the long-term football strategy and someone, as I said, to complete that football board that's, that's already in existence to make sure we've got really robust processes around the decision-making that we take right across the football department. And just in terms of the January transfer window, Philippe, how, how big a, a part of your conversation with the club was that in terms of budgets and players that you would like to bring in, not just in January, but also going forward in uh, next summer as well? It was a part of it. Um, like many parts, we talked about many things. Um, of course, it's, it's a part, but I'm also somebody who likes to see first what is the potential that is there already? I'm not somebody who wants every year like 10 new players and say, okay, uh, this one, this one is not good enough. I'm somebody who likes to invest in people, wants to find the key to get the best out of them. So we need to use the next weeks, months also to do that in the, in the best way. So all the players with me, Maybe not with some fans, and that's a little bit pity maybe, but with me, everybody started with the white page this week. So everybody has the chances also until January to prove themselves, to show that they are really good players, that they want to be on the pitch, that they want to make the difference for the club, that they want to give everything. And then we will see towards that period, and it's important to... Uh, to be uh, aligned then with the sportive director and, and to have the same ideas about football. If it's somebody who has totally different ideas about football, then it doesn't work. We talked about that also mm -hmm. in the process. So it's good that everybody's aligned and, and we had really clear talks about that. Good afternoon, Philippe. Uh, welcome to the club. Thank you. In terms of the, the confidence issue that you mentioned there, how do you go about, you and the coaching staff, instilling that in the players? Because as you mentioned, some of the, the recent matches, the players have looked as though they're very much lacking in confidence. Yeah, it's, it's uh, putting the right goals towards games, also to the right things that they have to do. And I want also players who are not afraid to fail, to make mistakes. It's part of football. There's not one team in the world, not even the best teams, that are perfect in everything that they do. But they're really perfect in the reaction afterwards. They're really good in that. If they make a mistake, they react directly. So those are things to work on. Uh, we don't have so much time. Like I said, we will see the team two days. Then we have the game. So I don't expect it to be the perfect game directly. But out of that, we can, uh, we can work on... Uh, the things that went really well or went good and the things that were less good and like this uh, built a story and make it better and better and convince the players also about all these things that are not science it's logical things it's it's it, those are normal things for me but we need to get all those things in their heads and that takes a little bit of time in terms then of the next few months you spoke about the players all have a, a, a clean slate till, till January. What sort of qualities do you want them to demonstrate? Obviously, good performance, but as individuals, what, what are you looking for from, from the squad? For me, um, there are four very important pillars in the way I want to see a, a team. I want to create here in the club the best technical team, the best tactical team, the best physical team, the best mental team, 
of the league. That's what I want to create next couple of months. That's my ambition. I know if you do that, then results follow. But it's quite some work. <laughs> Sorry, Philippe, just away from events today, I've obviously arrived in the country against the backdrop of what's happened back in Brussels. I just wonder uh, what you've made of that and what your message is to everyone back home in light of the, the terrible scenes. Yeah, when you talk about that, I, I get a little bit uh, cold that moment. It's, uh, yeah, it's terrible, all these things. Um, now it's Brussels, tomorrow it can be somewhere else. A few years ago it was like this in Europe. Um, those are things that are much more important than football uh, it's a pity that we live in a world like that for the moment and I think everybody needs to take the best out of every day and, and to stay positive because we speak now about one crazy person who did this and it was now in Brussels but it could have been anywhere else and those are things that it's impossible to avoid or to stop. So let's hope that uh, we can create a world where, where there are less crazy people in. And that everybody um, yeah, stays positive and, and looks on the bright side of life and takes out uh, the best out of every day. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all.